Hello, welcome to Philosophy of Religion. This is the meeting about the essence of God. And as you may recall, we have already gone through part one. This is part two. Uh, in the first part, we discussed uh, the essence of God, knowledge of the essence of God in Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Judaism, and Catholicism. So in Catholicism, we stayed quite a bit because we found a philosophical way of reaching or explaining how our intellect is able to reach the essence of God. We shall continue now in the second part, looking at how Islam and the rest of the other beliefs that we study in this course uh, face this issue about the essence of God. First one is Islam. But God's essence, the knowledge of the attributes of God in Islam is gotten through revelation or through, through the Quran. Um, it is not usual for right now in these days for uh, Islam to use any other source. There was a time when you had Avicenna and Averroes who were doing philosophy in order to study the things of the faith, but at present, well, uh, most of the people are more centered on the Qur'an, the holy book, which gives you the truth about God. But there was a time, yeah, there was, there was a certain portion of the Muslim population got interested in philosophy and started studying and accepting Aristotle's analysis of the divine. This was the time when the great philosophers like Ibn Sina, uh, Avicenna is another way of writing his name, and Ibn Rushd, live Averroes is the other way of writing his name. During that time, Muslim theology was not very far in character from Christian and Jewish theology. But when Al-Ghazali became very popular and the faction supporting him won superiority over the others, Al-Ghazali's teaching about the inability of philosophy to understand the things of God became common currency, became the common interpretation. Because of this change in stance, up to now in the Muslim world, God is considered so transcendent that we could not really say more about Him except what is already said in the Qur'an. The prevalence of strictly depending on Holy Scripture to determine the attributes of God came back to the fore and the use of philosophical analysis was greatly mitigated. Thus, God's essence is commonly known in prayer. For this reason, since it is, very, it is mentioned frequently, one very important attribute of God for a Muslim is that he is merciful. That is known to everybody. What about Protestantism? Because there is no central teaching authority among the Protestants, there is no centralized common belief either on how we can philosophically know the attributes of God and believe either. I mean, they don't have any centralized thing. Uh, each church could have a different interpretation of how you get to the very essence of God. But for many Protestants, the question of philosophical inquiry is probably irrelevant. For, for many of them, the testimony of sacred scripture is sufficient. If you remember, uh, one of the main tenets of Protestantism is sola scriptura, only scripture. And it is enough. So scripture is enough for us to know the attributes of God. Thus, we could probably find a wider range of means used by Protestants in order to know the attributes of God. It's going to be very different from one church to the other. Atheism, very simple. About God's essence, the atheistic analysis of the essence of God is simple. He doesn't exist, and therefore, there is no essence to be described. Period. Okay. New Age. New Age has a marked preference for Eastern and pre-Christian religions, which are reckoned to be uncontaminated by Judeo-Christian distortions. Okay, so you're looking now at when New Age looks at it in this way: the Christian, the Judeo-Christian religions are like additions or foreign things that have been brought into the concept of God. If you want the real concept of God, they would prefer to go all the way to the 
older religions such as Hinduism and Buddhism. Hence, great respect is given to the ancient agricultural rites and fertility cults. Gaia, Mother Earth, is offered as an alternative to God the Father, whose image is seen to be linked to a patriarchal conception of male domination of women. So according to the New Age, um, the concept of God the Father is a later thing when men started dominating women. But the original thing is Gaia, Mother Earth. So God is feminine rather than masculine. New Age. There is talk of God, but it is not a personal God. The God of the New Age speaks that speaks of is neither personal nor transcendent. Um, Gaia, for example, does not speak. Um, you relate to it because it's nature. But at the same time, it's not transcendent. It is nature itself. It is the spirit of nature itself. Nor is it the creator and sustainer of the universe, but an impersonal energy imminent in the world, with which it forms a cosmic unity. All is one. This unity is monistic, pantheistic, and more precisely, panentheistic. That is, God is everything and the world is within that God. Okay, the energy is everything and the world is within that cycle of energy becoming matter and matter becoming energy. God is the life principle and the spirit or, or soul of the world. The sum total of consciousness existing in the world, it is a sen in a sense, everything is God. For the new agers god's presence is clearest in the spiritual aspects of reality so every mind spirit is in some sense god that means you inside every human being god is there in a very special way because everything every, all spirit is god when it is consciously received by men and women divine energy is often called described as christic energy so there are some new agers that say that the very end and the very complete energy the divine thing is christic is christ there is also talk about talk of christ but this does not mean the jesus of nazareth he's talking about another christ the complete perfect state of the world christ is a title applied to someone who has arrived at the state of consciousness where he perceives himself to be divine and can thus claim to be the universal master, which happens in persons who, according to them, are, are so immersed in New Age or so adept at meditation that they touch on that aspect of reality that is divine. Okay? Get, get into that mode of reality that is divine. Jesus of Nazareth was not the Christ, but simply one among the historical figures in whom this Christic nature is revealed. Okay, so there are several persons in the history of the world that have become Christic. One is Jesus Christ, the other is Buddha, there and other things. So, other prophets that have been mentioned in the world. Every historical realization of the Christ shows clearly that all human beings are heavenly and divine. You just had to enter into that. Uh, very much. Hindu, Hinduistic, and uh, Buddhist, right? You enter into nirvana, uh, contact with the divine, uh, and leads them towards this realization. The innermost and the innermost and most personal psychic level on which the divine cosmic energy is heard, you can hear that God there by human beings is called the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you start putting things that are Christian, knowledge of God, as we have said before. The connection with the divine in New Age is of a mystical pseudo-scientific sort, which is very different from philosophical inquiry. It's a mixture of the mystical, which goes beyond reason, and the pseudo-scientific, which is well within reason but scientific. Okay, so that's the New Age. And that's all that we have, that I have for this lesson. If you have any contributions or any questions, you just send it to me through Bella for through the forum in Bella or through Flipgrid, okay? And if I can answer them, I would. And uh, I hope that you have learned a lot from this lesson and somehow you could discuss it well with friends who may have some questions about the essence of God. Have a good day and may we see each other in the next lesson.